Dana Delaney, the ageless beauty who captivated viewers during the golden era of television, is making headlines again at 67, showing that age is only a number and leaving little to the imagination in a new snapshot with everyone talking. From her spectacular concerts to her timeless elegance, Delaney radiates grace that others can only dream of. She is among the few surviving icons from Hollywood's golden age when charm and skill ruled. This video will explore Dana Delaney's incredible path, current buzzworthy occurrences, and how she refuses to slip into oblivion. Stay tuned as we revisit the performers whose legacies continue to inspire, reminding us why they were once household names and why Dana Delaney is still in our hearts. Mary Beth Peel, 1940. When Mary Beth Peel first started her acting career, she was a skilled opera singer who appeared in the Broadway production of Kiss Me Kate. When Peel made cinematic appearances in early 1992, she gained notice. Her wages also started to rise at about the same period. Her initial foray into cinema came from her role as a daycare center instructor in Jersey Girl, which further pushed her into the film business she is a part of today. In 2018, Mary made her film debut in Blue Night, where she played Dr. Marianne Holt. Barbie Benton, 1950. Barbie Benton was an American actress, model, singer, and television personality who gained notoriety in Hollywood for her alluring looks and charm. She was also considered one of the most desirable and sought after models. Barbie starred in many publications and four seasons of Hee Haw, in addition to her acting and singing career. During the 1970s, she recorded four albums with varying degrees of popularity. Barbie Benton, however, no longer often appears in projects since she took a break to prioritize her family. She also doesn't need to work for the rest of her life because of her enormous net worth. Alexander and Ariana, born in 1986 and 1988, are Benton's two children from her 1979 marriage to real estate entrepreneur George Gradow. The pair splits their time between their opulent Los Angeles and Aspen residences. Melanie Griffith, 1957. In the 1980s, Melanie Griffith became well known for her parts in movies such as Body Double and Something Wild. Although she had been acting in TV shows and films since the middle of the 1970s, her popularity only took off then. As the years passed, Melanie transitioned to a career on stage, taking part in Broadway plays such as Chicago in 2003. Coincidentally, she is still swamped today, despite having gone through many divorces, the most recent of which being in 2015, when she parted ways with actor Antonio Banderas. She took part in the SMILF series in 2019. Gladys Knight, 1944. Given her distinctive voice and stage presence, Gladys Knight, dubbed the Empress of Soul, is regarded as one of the finest vocalists of all time, which is unsurprising. Between the 1960s and the 1980s, Gladys gained recognition as the lead vocalist of Gladys Knight and the Pips, a group she co-founded with her brother and cousins. Even though she is already 75, she is still quite active. She competed as B in the 2019 season of The Masked Singer and finished third. Julie Andrews, 1935. Even at 83, beloved singer and actress Julie Andrews still exudes beauty from her earlier years. The actress is aging gracefully, thus we don't believe she needs plastic or cosmetic surgery. The Sound of Music and Mary Poppins are two of her best known films but the actress is still working today. In Despicable Me 3, she played Gru's mother. Sam Elliott, 1944. Actor Sam Elliott became well known in the 1970s after starring in Lifeguard, due in large part to his appearances in Gettysburg, Buffalo Girls, and Conagher. He continued to gain recognition. He is still swamped these days, and you may remember him from his 2018 appearance on A Star is Born. His estimated net worth is $10 million, but this figure will undoubtedly rise given that he is still actively acting. Elliot will be heard providing a voice in the upcoming movie, Lady and the Tramp. Lorenzo Lamas, 1958. 
Lorenzo Lamas made a fantastic contribution to the entertainment sector for which we will always be thankful. In the 1980s, the endearing Lanson Cumson from the beloved American soap series Falcon Crest becomes a considerable sensation. After the massive popularity of his first television series, Lamas was featured in Renegade, another popular program. The bulky actor at the time undoubtedly became the object of desire for many ladies. He was cast in some of the top television series throughout his career because of his excellent acting abilities and good looks. Lamas is gifted in many areas. He is not only a gifted actor, but also a skilled helicopter pilot and experienced martial artist. He continues to pursue acting, appearing in several low-budget movies. He seems in the best possible shape to have a healthy life. We naturally want to see more of his creations in the future. Lou Ferrigno, 1951. Fans first saw Lou Ferrigno when he appeared in the 1977 Hulk television series and motion pictures. But he is well known for more than just that. Lou used to be a professional bodybuilder, but he retired. His fitness regimen got him included in several films. Pumping Iron is the documentary for which he is best known. Lou was most recently seen in the 2012 The Avengers film. However, he is no longer employed in the field. Lou has earned a comfortable and secure retirement with a net worth of $6 million. After exchanging vows with Carla Green in 1980, he and she have lived happily ever after for the last 40 years. The 68-year-old is still a firecracker, and based on our up-close observations of Lou, we can be confident that he will stop at nothing to keep his audience entertained. We certainly have a particular place for the former Mr. Universe. Robbie Benson, 1956. Robbie Benson's impressive performances in movies like One-on-One, -on -One, 1977, and Ice Castles, 1978, captured the hearts and minds of young people throughout the 1970s. His notoriety grew even more when he voiced Beast in the 1991 Disney animated picture, Beauty and the Beast. He's also connected to a number of its spin-offs and sequels. Benson also succeeded in the television industry, appearing in six episodes of the beloved comedy, Friends. In addition to his work in acting and directing, Benson has contributed to cardiac research. He and Carla DeVito were married in 1982 and have remained close ever since. The actor is quite active and in his 60s. Benson has saved enough money throughout his lifetime. Jane Fonda, 1937. At first, seasoned actress Jane Seymour Fonda was hesitant to go to Hollywood in the footsteps of her famous father, Henry Fonda. When she met Lee Strasberg in 1954, her life completely altered. She joined the actor's studio on his suggestion and has not looked back. In her feature film debut, Tall Story, she showed remarkable potential to establish a name for herself. She went on to win two Academy Awards for Coming Home and Clute after that. Jane's faultless acting ability brought her several Hollywood successes, including They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, Julia, The China Syndrome, The Morning After, and so on. In addition to the Oscar, the stunning actress has won honorary Golden Lions, Golden Globes, Primetime Emmys, and other notable accolades. Without undergoing any surgery, the seven-time Academy Award nominee is still stunning in her 80s. Sophia Loren, 1934. Sophia Loren is an Italian actress, although her career as an industry legend began in America, especially Hollywood. In 1961, she became the first artist to win an Academy Award for a foreign language film, Making History. She was awarded Best Actress for the Italian film Two Women, the actress did not consider pension investments when she was younger, not with millions of dollars in her bank account. According to reports, Lorraine is worth $75 million. Tom Selleck, 1945. Tom Selleck is ageless, as the younger and older generations know him. Younger people are more familiar with Selleck from the comedy Friends and the television series Blue Bloods. However, the older generation associates him with the television shows Magnum P.I. and Three Men and a Baby. It's somewhat surprising since you would think this man's identity would only be known to older people. 
Most women his age are drawn to the gorgeous features of the University of Southern California basketball scholar, contributing to his notoriety. His recognizable mustache alone attracts girls. Since he has been involved in show business since the 1970s, Selleck has never considered retiring since his program, Blue Bloods, is still in production. Johnny Mathis, 1935. Johnny Mathis's 1976 hit song, When a Child is Born, helped make him synonymous with Christmas. The American singer gained enormous recognition as an album artist after beginning his career with standard music singles. He sold over 360 million albums and established himself as one of the 20th century's biggest selling musicians. His accomplishments include being admitted to the Grammy Hall of Fame for three different albums and being awarded the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Chances are, Too Much, Too Little, Too Late, The Twelfth of Never, A Certain Smile, Misty, and When a Child is Born are a few of his greatest successes. Even though he is in his 80s, he still records songs and does them with the same zeal as when he was younger. Ralph Carter, 1961. Ralph had already shown his abilities as a musician and actor, making his CBS debut in Good Times in the late 1970s. The youngest child of James Evans Sr. in Florida, better known as Michael Evans, is an American actor and singer. Before starting his TV career, he was often seen in the Broadway musical Raisin, inspired by Lorraine Hansberry's play A Raisin in the Sun. He received many award nominations for this performance, including the Tony, Drama Desk, and Theater World Awards. That is insufficient. A handful of his well-known songs had already been published. One reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. He resides in New York City with his three children and second wife, River York. Even though he would rather live alone, he leads an opulent life far from the flash and splendor of Hollywood. Richard Dean Anderson, 1950. In the middle of the 1980s, Richard Dean Anderson rose to fame as Angus MacGyver, the protagonist of the action television series MacGyver. The iconic action figure known only as Mac acted as a covert operative who loved defending humanity against hostile forces. Like his fictional character, MacGyver, Anderson was reared in Minnesota and began his career as a mime before going into movies. In addition to MacGyver, he has starred in Stargate SG-1, General Hospital, Today's FBI, and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. So what has the well-known action hero from the 1980s been doing lately? After making his last appearance in Apartment 23 of Don't Trust the <clears throat> B, Anderson is far from Tinseltown and actively involved in environmental and charitable endeavors. The seasoned actor has a fantastic life after retirement since he is a member of the well-known environmental organization, the Board of Advisors of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Dana Delaney, 1956. Dana Delaney, well known for playing Colleen McMurphy in China Beach, has had a varied and successful career. Her two primetime Emmy Awards for the military drama cemented her Hollywood stardom. Delaney stood out on television, especially as Catherine Mayfair in Desperate Housewives, where she was nuanced. In addition to television, she appeared in Tombstone and Exit to Eden. Delaney has kept a secluded existence to concentrate on her job and campaigning despite her prosperity. She has raised awareness of scleroderma, which affected a close friend, as a passionate woman's health advocate. Dana Delaney, an unmarried, childless actress, is revered for her charity and contributions for the arts and entertainment. Bolo Young, 1946. Young C, better known as Bolo Young, is a man of many abilities. With Bolo Young, Western martial arts films achieved their most incredible popularity. Young, sometimes called the Chinese Hercules, is well known for his characteristically evil roles in several action classics, including Double Impact, Bloodsport, Fearless Tiger, and Entering the Dragon. In movies like Shoot Fighter 1 and 2, one of the most striking villains from classic action movies has shown his value by playing morally ambiguous characters. He also collaborated with Bruce Lee and Jean-Claude Van Damme, two renowned actors, to showcase an excellent portfolio. 
Even in his mid-70s, the famous bodybuilder from Cineworld is still going strong. Given his age and activity level, he must have made lifestyle changes to enhance his general health. His zest for life and good nutrition practices are also to be commended. Jamie Farr, 1934. Famous comedian Jamie Farr achieved success in 1972 with the comedy drama MASH. His recurrent role as Maxwell Q. Klinger contributed to the show's success in drawing a sizable viewership. He was born in 1934 and has significantly impacted the American television business by often appearing in popular comedies, including The Chicago Teddy Bears, The Red Skelton Show, and The Danny Kay Show. He was cast by the renowned Warner Brothers in the teleplay No Time for Sergeants in 1955. After a break, the seasoned actor returned to the screen in The Cannonball Run, a comedy film, and then starred in The Cannonball Run 2. The legendary comedian is equally successful in his romantic life. He has been married to his longtime partner, Joy Ann Richards, for many years. Whether it's a balanced diet or an exercise program, Jamie is still enjoying a life of luxury. Batista, 1969. Former professional wrestler David Michael Batista Jr., better known by his ring name, Batista, is well liked by all WWE fans for his power, agility, and athleticism. The six foot six inch beast has even since left the program to pursue a career in acting. While Guardians of the Galaxy was a tremendous economic hit, his wicked role in The Man with the Iron Fists received excellent praise from reviewers. In the movie, he portrayed the Marvel superhero Drax the Destroyer. It's a smart move on his part to devote himself to Hollywood and it's a terrific way to save money. His career in the WWE began in 1999, and he rose to prominence quickly. He won the WWE Championship twice and was the World Heavyweight Champion once. He had a short hiatus before joining WWE again in 2013 and winning the 2014 Royal Rumble. Joyce Randolph, 1924. Joyce Randolph is a beautiful, kind, and intelligent woman from Hollywood's golden age. The audience will undoubtedly remember the gorgeous blonde of that age. The comedy, The Honeymooners, in which she was Trixie Norton, became an enormous success. She starred in almost 100 The Jackie Gleason Show episodes, including comedy. A Finnish family in Michigan raised her, and she showed an early talent for performing. She went to New York City to pursue her acting career and all of a sudden had the opportunity to go on an audition for a movie part. After making her Broadway debut, she got other television parts. She lost her wealthy businessman husband, Richard Lincoln Charles, in 1997. Even though Joyce is 95 years old, we are still in awe of how effectively she can care for herself. A healthy lifestyle or some covert anti-aging therapy, hmm? That has to be discovered by us. Emil Menti, 1972. The feral kid from Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, is familiar. As a young artist, the persona aided in his rise to worldwide renown. Surprisingly, he didn't say a word during the movie. Yet he nevertheless had a mesmerizing acting style that affected adults and young children. We are grateful that filmmaker Mel Gibson allowed him to show off his skills. After the release of Mad Max, his Hollywood career came to an abrupt end. Menti left Cineworld to focus on a new professional path. Before he retired, he had a few small parts in movies like Flute Man, The Winds of Jara, A Country Practice, etc. To live a quiet life with his family, the well-known kid actor from the Mad Max series is now sitting far away from the bustle of Hollywood. He is today a jeweler and has a prosperous commercial life. We believe that he will be able to avoid bankruptcy. Paul Hogan, 1939. Paul Hogan is the intrepid crocodile poacher from the film Crocodile Dundee. He received a Golden Globe for his outstanding comedic performance in the movie and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. Later, he launched The Paul Hogan Show, an Australian television program on the Nine Network. Being an actual native of Australia, Hogan never missed a chance to spread awareness of the importance of his country. 
He made several appearances and advertisements boosting travel to Australia. In addition, he had a prominent part in the critically acclaimed Australian television series, Anzacs. In 2017, The Seven Network in Australia produced a miniseries based on Hogan's lifestyle in which Josh Lawson authentically portrayed the character. Paul Hogan is still alive and well, enjoying a comfortable life with his family and accumulating substantial net worth throughout his acting career. Michael J. Fox, 1961. The Back to the Future trilogy fans are familiar with Canadian actor Michael J. Fox. His portrayal of Marty McFly helped him become well-known. At the age of 10, Fox embarked on his acting career. He had shown his intriguing acting skills in a television series called Leo and Me, which helped him establish himself in the business. He was able to take home the Grammy, Primetime Emmy, and much-coveted Golden Globe honors. His list of films includes, among others, Mars Attacks, See You Yesterday, and Midnight Madness. In addition, he is a renowned voice actor who has provided voices for various animated films, Stuart Little among them. Even though he is already above 50, the recognizable Back to the Future actor still looks excellent. He is still active since he last appeared in a movie in 2019. It makes sense that he may lead a healthy lifestyle despite the commotion. Bob Eubanks, 1938. An American disc jockey and presenter of game shows on TV had developed a usual fan base for Robert Leland Eubanks. The Newlywed Game, a famous game show, was a significant turning point in his life. The reimagined Card Sharks, which ran from 1986 to 1989, was another program that significantly advanced his career. Bob is now 82 years old. In 2000, he was bestowed with a star and an honorary accolade at the esteemed Hollywood Walk of Fame for his efforts on television. The Academy of Television Arts and Sciences awarded him a Lifetime Achievement Emmy five years later. He wed Deborah in 2004, and the two are content in their marriage. Even with his advanced age, Bob continues to inspire several people. He has saved enough money throughout his work to last him the remainder of his life. Barry Manilow, 1943. Having worked for almost 50 years, Barry is among the most well-known painters of the past. He created magic as a producer, arranger, musician, actor, singer-songwriter, and actor. I Write the Songs, Can't Smile Without You, Copacabana, Could It Be Magic, and other popular songs, some of his best-known hits. To his credit, Manilow has over 51 top 40 hits on the adult contemporary charts. Six albums received multiple platinum certifications, and 13 albums were certified platinum. Although his detractors never particularly liked him, it didn't break his spirit. Legends such as Bob Dylan and Frank Sinatra expressed their admiration for him, and he was very well liked by his followers. Since 2014, Gary Keefe has been his partner, and they are happy in their marriage. Manilow may not be as magical as he once was at 77, but given his money, he shouldn't be too concerned. Willie Mays, 1931. The world likes to refer to William Howard Mays as Willie Mays, or more affectionately, as the Say Hey Kid. Playing with the New York San Francisco Giants for 22 seasons, He is regarded as one of the finest center fielders in MLB history. He was once a member of the New York Mets. Willie was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1979. Mays made his MLB debut after graduating from high school in 1950 and was awarded Rookie of the Year. A few years later, he also took home two titles as the National League's most valuable player and 11 gold gloves. The fact that he made it through 24 All-Star games says a lot about his skill. The 89-year-old superstar has undoubtedly amassed wealth during his lifetime, and his credit score is also relatively high. He has to be very mindful of his health for the time being. Cheryl Ladd, 1951. If you saw Chris Monroe on NBC's Charlie's Angels, you know that Cheryl was the only person who could have given her character life. Up until 1981, she had stood in for Farrah Fawcett Majors. She impressed us with several movies, including Millennium, Poison Ivy, Purple Hearts, and Permanent Midnight. 
Lad remains stunning, even at 69 years old. She probably keeps herself in good shape and pays close attention to her food. After achieving significant recognition and success, Ladd pursued her acting career, appearing in several comedies, primarily musicals. She even attempted to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl XIV. Since 1981, Ladd has been wed to music producer Brian Russell. She dedicates the majority of her time to the nonprofit organization Child Help, serving as a celebrity advocate for the treatment and prevention of child abuse victims. With what she has accumulated throughout these years, she will have enough money to last a lifetime. Phil Collins, 1951. In addition to being a solo musician, Phil is most known for his work as the drummer and vocalist for the well-known rock group Genesis. He has shown his abilities by balancing acting, songwriting, and singing roles, producing records, and playing many instruments live. His expertise in music is just unmatched. The 69-year-old phenomenon, born and raised in London, finished the Not Dead Yet tour in 2019 and authored his autobiography in 2016. Given his wealth, more than $260 million, we may assume he has made several investments. The seven we, three UK, have further enhanced his brilliant career and number one hits he achieved in only six years. Collins is a charming guy. Millions of followers were devastated by the many ways he suffered for an extended period. He was also troubled by retirement and personal matters. However, there was optimism in the shape of his reunion with Orion, his ex-wife. Whoa! Eric Clapton, 1945. It's time to check out the talented Eric Clapton if you have yet to become familiar with blues music. Whatever your tastes and preferences, you will listen to Eric's catchy songs. The only other person to be inducted three times into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is the English rock and blues musician. Additionally, he was named fourth in Gibson's Top 50 Guitarists of All Time, fifth in Time Magazine's The Top 10 Best Electric Guitar Players, and second in Rolling Stone's list of the 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time. Eric, who turned 75 this year, is still in demand as a musician and recently performed at the Crossroads Festival. His many accomplishments provide a glimpse into the riches and treasures he has amassed over the years. Clapton has ties to several nonprofit organizations, stays in touch with them, and sometimes plays with them. Happy Christmas, his most recent solo album, was released in 2018. Yasmin Bleeth, 1968. In the television series Baywatch, One Life to Live and Ryan's Hope, Yasmin Amanda Bleeth portrayed Caroline Holden, Leanne Dermarest, and Ryan Finelli. The 52-year-old endearing lady got recognition and ultimately won the affection of many thanks to her incredible performances. Yasmin agreed to star in the little television series Titans in 2000. She considered many more TV shows and movies and made a few cameo appearances. However, her career didn't work out. In 2000, she was married to Paul Cerrito. Even though things were not perfect after marriage in 2002, the couple persevered through difficulties. She has been the face of fundraising initiatives that have raised thousands of dollars for breast cancer research and studies. Her contributions are numerous, and we trust that she has taken care of her health insurance policies before. She appeared in public for the first time in 2000, 10 years later. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon.